We have all had to adapt to many different ways of meeting during this pandemic. And today we will experience a hybrid gathering where some will be together, socially distanced in the field house at Calvin University, while others will be alone or in family bubbles in many different locations connected by technology. Yet, whether you are attending in person or are connected from afar, there is one thing that unifies us, and that is our God. Let us start this time of celebration in prayer. Our Father, we come to you today to praise you for all the things that you have done for us during this last year. For graduates, for faculty, for leadership, for staff, and for technology. Thank you, Lord, for being our Father and the one that makes it all possible again this year. We pray for guidance in these strange times. Guide each graduate today as to where you would use them to further your kingdom. Guide each family member as they will be the encouragers and yet will be impacted by the choices that are made. Guide the seminary as it pivots and changes to adapt to a new normal. Please guide all of us, Lord, as we participate in this important occasion. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome. We're glad that you're here. We know this is probably not, once again, you thought you were then receiving your graduation diploma. And we're grateful for, once again, family and friends who are witnesses of this moment. It's unique in so many different ways. Our board chair, Keith Ostuk, is living in Canada and cannot come across the border. Uh, but he's watching on a live stream. And uh, thank you for those words for, once again, our board chair, one of 21 trustees throughout the United States and Canada. I still remember the very first commencement I was privileged to preside over as president of Kelvin Theological Seminary. There was a student by the name of Peter Korniloff who when I gave my hand, he came and gave me a bear hug. Now, in this day and age, that's almost criminal, but, uh, but today we're gonna have lots of opportunities after this event for pictures and sharing. I saw as faculty and, and, uh, and graduates were together, different exchanges and pictures, so we're grateful for that. We're gonna proceed as, with the idea that this is a graduation, a commencement that once again is part of our history part of a history since 1876 and part of that is to recognize there would have been a class right there from 1970 and 1971 gathered as witnesses for this event. We use the word commencement to signify not just the end of a degree program but the beginning or commencement of something new. I want you to think back to 1970, 1971, 50 years ago the world was in turmoil. Protesters filled the streets. There was violence that was punctuated by the assassinations of President John F. Kennedy, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and Senator Robert Bobby Kennedy. Economic and racial injustices were revealed then as well. Division over involvement in the Vietnam War and the selection of a new United States president in 1968 still reverberated in a deeply divided and polarizing time. All these and more world events are the backdrop to the seminary commencements of 1970 and 1971, and we understand some of those graduates from those years are watching us live stream now or will later. As you see the names and pictures from some 50 years ago, you may recognize some of the names. Every name is important, and the stories told from that beginning, that commencement some 50 years ago are important. On the surface, you and I may see the limits of a previous day. The graduates then were all male, all white, and probably came from three countries, Canada, the Netherlands, and the United States. They also went to the same place for their glasses, if you look at the pictures closely. But look beneath the surface and you see people who are like you, called to serve and entering into a turmoil, a time of turmoil, a polarization. They were called to serve and having known many of them, they prayed for a day and longed for a day like today, where there are men and women graduates from across the globe. Their hopes and prayers are answered tonight, and they are also witnesses for this moment. 
One name that I would highlight is Reverend Wayne Wise, who could have been here tonight and would have been here tonight. Wayne was a pastor, a colleague, and a friend of mine who died this past year. He was a 1969 graduate at Calvin Seminary, but more importantly, he's the father of one of our graduates tonight, Maria Lies Bowater. Maria is the daughter of Wayne and Christine Lies, and Maria actually has a picture of her father at his graduation, and we hope to actually duplicate that picture later on after the ceremony. Again, despite the jokes about their hairstyle or glasses, we seek to honor these graduates from 1970 and 1971. They were called to serve and they entered in that world of conflict and trouble, seeking to be ministry leaders and pastors and bringing the message of the gospel. We thank them for their faithfulness and being witnesses for God in troubled times. I'm going to just read their last names as a way to honor them and uh, invite you to follow. Baker. Barons, Boltheis, Kaminga, De Young, De Vries, De Vries, Eldersma, Eisenberg, Goddard. I thought the screen was going to be bigger. Uh, Gedeka, Havor, Hookstra, Haus, Hausma, Anton, Hutt, Kastruck, Lammers, Lickel, Lees, Miedema, Petrulia, Poles, Pramsma, Reefer, Mike Rietzma. Jack Rhoda, Ruloff, Schuld, Scott, Schweitzer, Turling, Teneinheis, Vanderburg, Vanderwood, Vander Z, Wes Van Dyke, Van Klompenberg, Vermeule, Vrend, Water. 71, Admiral and Admiral, both brothers. Elferink, Baker, Vilks, Cooper, De Young, De Moore, De Vries, De Young, De Young, Dykeman, Schlickema, Hogan, Yankee, Kamerad, Koch, Kuiper, Lampsma, Leibold, Lobizo, Stan Mast, who served at the seminary till just recently retiring from that role, Menzink, Meyer, Newick, Osterhaus, Pauls, Paulsrock, Neil Plenniga, yes, my predecessor as president, Rietzma, Jack Rhoda again, came back, he liked it so much. The Samplonis, Skoltons, Sitzma, and Slings. As we think of those names, would you join me as they're watching now or later, would you thank them for their service? <laughs> and there was another screen, sorry. Smith, Sitzma, Timmers, Vanderburg, Vanderkam, Vandermeer, Vanderplatt, Vanderland, Rilin, Vuktaveen, Watts, Wiseman, Zorov. I want you to know there's not as many V names in the class as we have now. And you'll be impressed with, once again, the list of names that we will have. Now we move to really those who um, we want to recognize as Distinguished Alumni Award recipients from 2020 and 2021. At his faculty and then board meetings in 2020, the trustees of CTS named two recipients of the seminary's Distinguished Alumni Award for 2020 and then added Reverend Emmanuel Belea for 2021. The award is given annually to recipients who bring unusual credit for their alma mater by their distinction in Christian ministry. They are examples for us. Their witness and their ministry gives us a picture and insights of what it means to be called to serve. First, called to serve, Reverend Stanley Jim, a 1995 CTS graduate. He came from the Navajo tribe and to return to the Navajo tribe to serve. Stanley, with his wife Sharon, has served so well in local and denominational ministries in the Christian Reformed Church as bridge builders, guides, and interpreters. Most recently, Reverend Stanley Jim was serving the Navajo Nation when COVID-19 brought devastating impact to the nation. But please listen and hear his own story of what is important to him and for ministry. wife and I've been here for over five years now. Uh, it's Window Rock Christian Reformed Church. Window Rock actually is a, uh, the capital of the Navajo Nation and, um, and its context is pretty much predominantly Navajo. Every tribe, every reservation, they struggle with how do you understand the Bible? Let's get back to the Bible. We need to really understand the Bible, the Word, there was hunger for the word, I saw that. 
And then there was um, leadership development that was, um, that was at the top of, the, of all of their, what they were doing. And so I began to uh, uh, investigate and began to uh, work towards um, developing leaders uh, in other, uh, other tribes. It's about relationships, building relationships, and then fostering those relationships, uh, connecting the people, um, relate their relationship with Jesus Christ and with even with one another. And so the ministry here is about um, building relationships just as Jesus did. And uh, so we try to model that here at this uh, church. What brings joy to me is that to see what Paul, the Apostle Paul, had said to, to the church in Ephesus. And uh, he said that, um, that our task, that the leader's task is to help mature the believers. And in, in five years, I have seen in this church, people, members of this church maturing from uh, Matthew chapter 14. And Jesus feeds the 4,000. I began to read that over and over. And then for me was it that I saw three characteristics of Christ. One is that when, these, uh, when he was preaching and uh, teaching, people began to bring uh, the sick and the lame to him. They brought to him, they came to him. So the first uh, characteristic in that I saw was that, that Jesus was approachable. He had compassion. So when the people were all hungry, they needed to, to be fed, Jesus uh, felt compassion. And so in your ministry, uh, my advice and even to myself is that uh, as ministers, we need to be compassionate. Uh, the compassionate with, with everything that we do. Another characteristic of, of, of Jesus was that um, he was flexible, uh, flexibility. Uh, in our ministries, we need to be flexible. We can't be rigid all the time. And the ministry, um, what we are about is that we, the ministry that we do is about God. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about my culture. It's not about um, our theologies. Uh, it's about Jesus. Jesus is in, incarnated in us and we are living Jesus out every day. And that is about, uh, I think, uh, the, the most uh, wonderful thing that, that's ever happened to us is that uh, even my wife and I, and as ministers here, that the incarnate, incarnate Jesus is working through us and speaking through us and doing His bidding through us. And uh, we praise God for that. And so there's many, many passages that I could point to uh, that tells us that um, don't quit. You may struggle, um, you may go through difficulties in your life. God will never quit on you. And so we must not quit. I can't, there's no way I can quit. Maybe at retirement, but uh, even beyond that, um, uh, I'm still gonna be doing something for the Lord. Once again, we appreciate the ministry of Pastor Reverend Stanley Jim as he either watches live or later. Would we show our appreciation to him for his ministry? We want to recognize the call to serve and the recognition of sustaining in ministry through the ministry of Reverend John DeVries. Reverend John DeVries, when you said those words to people of a certain generation, knew that one word, one country, was going to be highlighted, India. A writer of books like Why Pray and Why Give, Pastor John DeVries coupled enthusiasm with a practical bet on this question, how will more people learn more about Jesus? And the answer was equip more people for the ministry. I invite you to watch this video demonstration presentation at this time. In Bacolod City in the Philippines, God used a simple but powerful tool to bring people to Himself. A Bible study booklet titled, Who is God? had been shared in eight languages throughout the country. Just a short booklet with the truth of the gospel in its pages, it was a conduit for miracles. For example, a new 16-year-old believer, Nestor, went out with booklet in hand, attracting a group of 14 to study the text leading some visitors to receive Christ and planning to gather again the next week. 
The booklet itself was not magic, but the Holy Spirit was working through it. Just as the Spirit had worked when the booklet was first written by Calvin Seminary alumnus John DeVries. John graduated from the seminary with a Bachelor of Divinity degree in 1961. His passion for sharing Christ by equipping people in their own culture to share the gospel would lead him to many missional opportunities, including in the country of India. After serving with the World Home Bible League, John helped to launch his heart project, Mission India. The ministry has grown from one office in a rented house to 70 regional offices in India, run by Indian missionaries in their own country. In a recent year alone, Mission India recorded nearly 3 million commitments to Christ and helped plant over 11,000 worshiping groups. John stepped down as the organization's president in 2002, but remained active as a writer and fundraiser until his passing in 2020. His legacy is marked by a willingness to be sent by God, to experience non-traditional styles of ministry, and to trust in the ministry abilities of indigenous workers. Through John's willingness and God's sovereignty, his story is one of magnifying the good news, furthering the Great Commission, and discipling millions. Tonight we're honored, and I'm not so sure where they're at in this field house, we're honored to have the wife of John DeVries, Mrs. Adelaide Atz DeVries, with us along with two of their four children, a son, Pastor Steve DeVries, and daughter, Mary Dykstra. Would you please stand and somebody help me find them? Right there. Thank you. Thank you for your ministry, and certainly uh, we appreciate once again the ongoing nature of that story for you. Finally, a call to serve to sacrifice in ministry. Reverend Emmanuel Blea. He was born on Christmas Day in 1968 and was named Emmanuel. He died in Nigeria with his wife and an unborn child by gunfire that was targeted against him for being an ambassador of peace and reconciliation. In between his birth and his death, Reverend Emmanuel Blea helped people see and hear what the gospel meant, breaking down walls and service to others for the glory of God. I can still picture Emmanuel as a Calvin Seminary student washing windows, the windows on the way to chapel. He was not a student who was, we paid for that service. He volunteered to do so. And he told me and he told so many of us that he did it as a, as a gesture of gratitude and appreciation for his being at and being supported to study at Kelvin Seminary. I invite you to again read all that was written by all our distinguished alumni that's in your program in English and Spanish. But now listen to part of the story and reflection as shared by Professor John Woodfleet. Robert Balea was a pastor. He dearly loved his community, and he spoke about them in our classes at Calvin Seminary with gratitude. He also spoke about them with great longing for their discipleship and growth and faith and knowledge and Christian hope, and solidarity, and the capacity to forgive and experience reconciliation in places of great conflict. I remember Reverend Balea as a person who loved to learn. His 2014 THM thesis explored the use of charismatic gifts within the Reformed Church of Nigeria. The title of his thesis is The Liturgical Use of Spiritual Gifts, Discerning Next Steps in Contextual Nigerian Practice. And he dedicated this thesis to the Christian Reformed Church in Nigeria that is battling with challenges that charismat oppose for the growth and unity of the church. Emmanuel Balea loved the Lord. Emmanuel Balea loved the Holy Spirit and the gifts that the Spirit would lavish on the church. Reverend Balea loved the reformed tradition that nurtured him and longed for it to taste and experience the gifts of the Spirit 
but he also saw some significant spiritual dangers in ways that some Christian traditions too readily associate the outpouring of the Spirit with spiritual experiences that were sometimes used to break down Christian community. He loved the gift and he longed for pastoral discernment and he loved to learn in ways that would serve his community. And third, we remember and celebrate the life of Reverend Balea as a teacher. He brought gifts into every classroom and discussion. He would frequently sit outside my office with a stack of books, ready for a moment to come in and ask me a question or to bring to me an insight related to his significant reading. He challenged cultural assumptions in classes that we had together. He loved learning from international students from all over the world. He helped make Calvin Theological Seminary a place where we experience the communion of saints. In the Heidelberg Catechism, when reflecting on the phrase, the communion of the saints in the creed, the writers of the Catechism have bequeathed to us this memorable set of phrases, that as believers one and all, we share in Christ and in all his treasures and gifts, and that each of us should consider it our duty to use these gifts readily and cheerfully to build up each other. Emmanuel participated in the communion of saints when he was a student. We continue to participate in the communion of saints as we remember Reverend Belay's life. We continue to receive his treasures and gifts, even as we pray for his family, his congregation, and for the Christian Reformed churches in Nigeria, and for Christian churches all over the world. We do hope that this video is shared with the eight remaining children of Pastor Emmanuel and Juliana and to the church that he cultivated. So for them, would you join and give thanks for his life and ministry? It's gonna be said a lot tonight. Congratulations. Congratulations, graduates of 2020 and 2021. Our hearts are full. In just a few moments, you'll join family and friends here and then elsewhere to create new memories. And with new CDC guidelines, we'll have more smiles shown and more hugs than we could even imagine just a few months ago. As noted, this is a historic day for you and for Calvin Seminary. Since 1876, for 145 years, God has used Calvin Seminary to form leaders for his church. And we just saw witness of that for the Navajo Nation, for India, for Nigeria. Today, there are 13 countries represented in our certificate and master's and PhD graduate programs. For the class of 20 and 2021, we have Brazil represented, Canada, China, Egypt, El Salvador, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Kenya, Mexico, Netherlands, Rwanda, South Korea, and the United States. So different than from 1970 and 71. More than half of our graduates may be attending this commencement via live stream. A special word again of welcome and encouragement to you watching today. We wish we could all be gathered in one place at one time. For some of you, the border remains closed. For others of you, especially the class of 2020, you've already entered into a new chapter of life and ministry. We know, we know we all have had our lives interrupted by this pandemic. We now live in between what was seen as normal and what is yet to come. This in-between land does not yet feel like home and it is marked by loss and lament. We understand that even your tears of joy may be mixed with tears of sorrow at the memories of a family member or friend who cheered you on in your journey, but who may not be here for you now to celebrate with you. And yet God does show up for us in this in-between land 
between Egypt and the promised land, in between exile and return, in between the past and the future. God is here in this place and in this present moment. Soon we'll hear the names and see the pictures of every graduate from the 2020 and 2021 class. We will then stand to congratulate all of you and look forward to after ceremony pictures and moments to personally congratulate you for your achievement. And I'm privileged to share this commencement address as an opportunity on behalf of the faculty, the staff, the board of trustees, and your fellow students to provide one last word of blessing and challenge to you. We desire to join others in giving thanks to God for your gifts and accomplishments, but we also desire to frame this moment in a larger story of God and his unfolding kingdom. This moment is certainly not yours alone. Look around if you haven't to see the people that are here. In a few more moments, we will give thanks for the family and friends who have prayed for, supported, and encouraged you step by step. This moment is a step in the journey of fulfilling your calling. A certificate or degree is a reflection of how you responded to that calling of God and developed your gifts in a season of study for even greater service in the church of Jesus Christ. But what is the context of ministry which will be the context of your ongoing ministry? Usually I identify some key events or highlights of recent history for you and I to recall. Tonight I want to provide that context, especially of the last 15 months, in less than 200 words. So here we go. Words. Let's start with this one. Zoom. I can't hear you. You're muted. You're still muted. Zoom fatigue. COVID-19. Pandemic. Global pandemic. Borders closed. Mask. Hand sanitizer shortage. Toilet paper hoarding. Clorox wipes shortage. Lockdown. Stay-at-home order. Netflix, Disney Plus, streaming, binging, too much to watch. There's nothing to watch. Oxygen, ventilators, not enough ventilators, morgues, emergency morgues, essential workers, Stress, COVID fatigue, loss of time, loss of connections, loss of lives. Infection rates, first wave, second wave, third wave, coronavirus variants, loss of jobs, home foreclosures, businesses closing, 25% capacity, 50% capacity, takeout, stimulus checks, loss of time, loss of connections, loss of life. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, say his name, say her name, say their names all those names. Racial injustice, attacks on Asian and Asian Pacific persons, mass murders, loss of time, loss of connections, loss of life. Campaigns and elections, ballots, absentee ballots, ballot drop-off boxes, electoral college, President Donald Trump, President Joseph Biden, Vice President Mike Pence, Vice President Camilla Harris. January 6, Capitol Uprising, Inauguration, another stimulus package, Centers for Disease Control, CDC, Dr. Anthony Fauci, 
Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, hope, hope, relief, grief, graduation, here we are. The context of ministry of the last many months, a global pandemic, economic disruption, and the revelation and reckoning of racial injustice will continue to affect you, will continue to affect us. And in this context, we celebrate with you that you, you are called to serve in this broken world that God still so loves. There are other words that I thought about using, Afghanistan, troop withdrawal, India, Myanmar, Israel, Gaza, bombings, and also Nigeria, conflict. In the midst of this context, I want you to hear again the call to ministry. I invite you to center your life, not on the context, but on the calling of God. Context will change. You will minister in the midst of various contexts, but but you get rooted and you keep connected by focusing on your calling. Many months ago, shortly after learning of his death, I heard the voice of Pastor Emmanuel Balea in the reading of scripture. It was for his continued degree and work as a student at the Robert E. Weber Institute for Worship Studies. And they helped supply this video. When I heard Emmanuel's voice again, I knew this was the text for us to share together, to let it reverberate over us as we bless you and congratulate you and challenge you to continue in the calling that God places before you, which God places before us. And so I'm gonna ask you to stand as we hear the someone who is now with Jesus, read the words of scripture from Isaiah 61, verses one through seven. Would you stand for the reading of scripture? Wonderful people of God, let us pray. Father, here we are, your children. Speak, for we are listening. Grant us understanding to your word. Amen. The words of Isaiah the prophet to God's people in all times and in all places, as recorded in the book that we love. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim freedom for those held captive. The opening of those for prisoners who are bound. He has sent me to proclaim that the time of the Lord's favor has come and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. Comfort for all who mourn. Care for those who grieve in Zion. They will be given a crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy shall flow instead of tears of grief and they will be clothed in a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called ox of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his glorious splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been laid waste for generations. 
Strangers will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will walk your fields and vineyards. But you, you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be called ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations and in their riches you will boast. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion of honor. And instead of this honor, you will rejoice in what you have been given, a double portion in the land is your inheritance. And, and, and everlasting joy shall be yours. This is the word of the Lord. I encourage you tonight to remember what you have already seen. Remember the call to serve in ministry. Remember the witness and testimony of Reverend Stanley Jim, who in the midst of a pandemic ravaging the Navajo Nation, still centered his ministry in helping people know and understand God's word. Remember the call to serve in ministry. Remember the call to sustain in ministry. Remember the witness and testimony of Reverend John DeVries who went to India and kept going back to India and who brought others to India and who focused on equipping people in India to serve God and to spread his word. The gospel seed planted by Reverend DeVries with consistency and with the goal of sustaining the ministry by investing in others is still bearing fruit. Remember the call to sustain in ministry. And finally, remember the call to sacrifice in ministry. Ministry is not easy. I hope and pray that none of you will be martyred like Reverend Emmanuel Blea and his wife, Juliana. But I do hope you will always remember the witness and testimony of Reverend Blea, who with courage and conviction committed his very life to serve in ministry and in the ministry of reconciliation in a troubled world. Remember the call to sacrifice in ministry. In ministry, you're called to serve others out of love. Today, you'll receive a tangible reminder of this call to serve in your gift bags already. The faculty were jealous. They, you, they didn't get one, but you have one. You have the opportunity to see not only the diploma that we desire to provide for you, but a serving towel that says, Calvin Theological Seminary, call to serve. So as you go into this world of trouble, bear witness, and, in, and do so in ways that will help this world to listen. You carry the with you the good news that the grave is not the end for those who are found in Christ Jesus. I loved it when Reverend Emmanuel Balea said, and, and, and. God cares for you and he cares about the people whom you will meet and minister to in any and all contexts. As you graduate from Calvin Seminary today, please keep this truth before you. The story of ministry is the story of hope by the power, the grace, and the love of God always. God is calling you to a deeper hope that is always and only centered on him, and that survives a pandemic. Finally, we love you. We will pray for you. We look forward to what God will do through you. We look forward to hope coming alive, joy coming alive in you and your ministry. And all God's people say, amen. We're going to sing together now, English, Spanish. Ro Romero Garcia, who's a graduate to be, uh, is going to help us lead the song to Fidelidad. Vamos a cantarlo en español y luego en inglés. Vamos a cantarlo dos veces. Tu fidelidad es grande. Bendito Dios, 
grande es tu fidelidad Tu fidelidad es grande Tu fidelidad incomparable es Nadie como tú Bendito Dios, grande es tu fidelidad. I depend upon your faithfulness. Yes, I do, Lord. I can journey on, for you are always there. None compares with you. Oh, precious one, oh, how great your faithfulness. I depend upon your faithfulness. Yes, we do, Lord. I can journey on, for you are always there. None compares with you. Oh, blessed ones, oh, how great your faithfulness. Vamos a cantar una vez más en español. Tu fidelidad es grande, todos los que puedan. Tu fidelidad es incomparable, incomparable es nadie como tú. Bendito Dios, grande es tu fidelidad. I depend upon your faithfulness. Yes, we do. I can journey on, for you are always there. None compares with you. Our blessed one, oh, how great your faithfulness. I believe that the Spanish is a heavenly language. I don't know about you. Let's sing it in Spanish for the last time. Tu fidelidad es grande. Que se oigan los hombres. Bendito Dios, grande es tu fidelidad, grande es tu fidelidad, grande es tu fidelidad. Great is your faithfulness, great is your faithfulness. Yes, Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Gracias por tu fidelidad, Señor. Muchas gracias, Señor. Amen. Thank you, Raúl. That was just wonderful. Agreed? That was just amazing. Thank you. Before we uh, confer our degrees uh, upon our graduates and watch a video in which they are all wonderfully shown to us, I would just like to remind you that there are some who are graduating today who cannot be here. Some have been a part of our distance learning program and live quite a distance from Grand Rapids. Others finished their work last year or this past December and have moved to places far away or did not have a ceremony last year. Although these graduating students cannot be here with us, their names are listed in the graduation program. And so we want to honor their achievement and calling just the same. Secondly, I have this request. In order to allow the family and friends of each graduate to hear their loved one's names, please hold all of your applause and small fireworks, any displays of joy, until all of the names of the graduates have been read aloud. After the last PhD graduate student is named, then you will receive the starting signal. 
Then we will have ample opportunity to let loose with our applause and other exuberant and legal displays of joy. Thank you. Now, I have one other third thing I wanted to say is that when we watch this wonderful video of our graduates on the screens, uh, as your name and as your slide comes up, I would like to ask you as the graduate to rise to your feet. And that way we can acknowledge you as well as see your family and uh, up on the screen. So Mr. President, uh, here are the names and the pictures of our 2020 and 2021 graduates. Mr. President, the following persons have satisfied the requirements for the certificate in family care. Señor Presidente, las siguientes personas han satisfecho los requisitos para el programa de certificado en cuidado familiar. Emanuel D. Araujo. Keila Araujo. J. Epifanio Armijo. Rosa E. Armijo. Jocelyn Fernández Martínez. Norma Gramajo. Vilsán M. Gramajo Méndez. Mariela Miranda Mendoza. Raúl Romero García. Mara V. Mijangos Santiago. Antonia Sánchez. Miguel Villegas Zárate. Mr. President, the following persons have satisfied the requirements for the certificate in Latino ministry. Señor Presidente, las siguientes personas han satisfecho los requisitos para el certificado en Ministerio Latino. María Magdalena Lozano. Mateo Lucas. Diego Lux. Jorge Alberto Molina Álvarez. Areli León Moreno. Carlos A. Valladares. Narcedalia Vargas. Mr. President, the following persons have satisfied the requirements for the Masters of Arts in Family Care. Señor Presidente, Las siguientes personas han satisfecho los requisitos para la maestría en cuidado de la familia. Nakumkit Miguel Antun Timias. Saúl Hernán Enríquez Beizaga. Shari García. Shafter Humberto Roble. Daniel Montejo Velázquez. Jennifer León Ramírez. Carolina 
Ramírez. Ángel Sablón Muñoz. Mr. President, the following person has satisfied the requirement for the certificate of Bible instruction. Annika Geraldine DeYoung. Mr. President, the following persons have satisfied the requirements for the certificate in ministry leadership. David Alverson. Jeremy Andrew Camper. Grace H. K. Park. Mr. President, the following persons have satisfied the requirements for Master of Arts in Ministry Leadership. Nate Boone. Lisa Ann Overzet DeYoung. Matthew Thomas Hochhalter. James M. Jones. Vinny Taddeo. Youngja Yun. Manuel Fernando Calvan. Nathaniel Glasper, Jr. Helen Jung. Manuel Ortiz. Rodrigo Ortiz. An Yu Song. Mr. President, the following persons have satisfied the requirements for the Master of Arts, Bible and Theology. Byron Salguero. Zhu Yen Chen. Elishael Munoz. Anne Marie Scherer. Paul Van Dyke, Hong Yang. Mr. President, the following persons have satisfied the requirements for the Master of Theological Studies. Gerard Caesar, Kimberly Hackworth, Jacob Lepre. Jiaben Chu, David Sheldon, Brian Vanderby, Vivian Abdel Malik, Rachel Gomez, Caitlin Houlihan, Bethany Lampen. Yi Sheng Pan, David Skolman, Frank Tan, June Wang, Andrew Zoko. Mr. President, the following persons have satisfied the requirements for the Masters of Divinity degree. Richard Austin Britton. Andrea Christina Bolt. Scott Haywood Carr. Jaybook Choi. Enrique Umberto Cuevas Casillo. Derek Ellens. Heather Haveman, Travis Jamison, Kelsey Joanne Jones, Kennedy Muli Kaliti, Du Young Kim, Ju Hyung Kim. Seung Yoon Kim, 
Joy Elizabeth Lawrence. Bawi Lian. Daniel Frederick Myers. Kyung Yul Oh. Jeremy Osterhaus. Kyle Rodriguez. Hannah Saxton. Nathaniel Schmidt. Joshua Stamis. Christopher Tibben. Steve Van Dyke. Kelly J. Beist. Juan J. Choi. Eric Michael DeLang. Joshua L. Grimes. Tyler R. Helfers. Hong Jung. Eunice I. Kim. Timothy James Kimball. Hoon J. Lee. Maria Lays Bowater. Noah Andrew Matais. Francisco Manessis. Justin Nitta. Anastas Zabonimpa. Ryan Michael Fan. Kwangjin Pyon. Jerry Rawlings Ochiing Opio. Kent Sanders. Dawe Shao. Lynette Vanderhoof Myers. Anthony Dwayne Vandershoff. Ryan A. K. Vanderwees. Marissa Ann Walters. Leah Wilkening. Mr. President, the following persons have satisfied the requirement for the Master of Theology. Jimin Baek, Baek Jimin. Clayton Bailey. Sanghyun Ju, Ju Sanghyun. Jose Augusto Abisamna Figueredo. Brandon Hurth. Sungyu Ju, Ju Sungyu. Eunsik Kim, Kim Eunsik. Inte Kim, Kim Inte. Sungwook Kwon, Kwon Sungwook. Myungsuk Lee, Yi Myungsuk. Sayel Lee, Yi Sayel. Lun Fei Lui, Liu, Lun Fei. Gun Ho Meng, Meng Gun Ho. Sang Tek O, O Sang Tek. Jun Su Bak, Bak Jun Su. Yan Pian, Pian Yan. Ali Salim, Gwangwook Se, Se Gwangwook, Ryan Selton, Lin Song, Song Lin, 
Virginia Yip, Yip Lao Xiu, Chen Zhao, Zhao Chun, Chen, En He is Hong, Hong En He, He Sung Kim, Kim He Sung, Hyo Young Kim, Kim Hyo Young, Jin Sol Kim, Kim Jin Sol, Young Kwang Kim, Kim Young Kwang, Galen Mason, Hun Tak O, O Hun Tak, Jeho Ok, Ok Jeho, Cedric Wayne Parsers, Dai Wei Shao, Shao Dai Wei, Brian Vanderby, Bryson Mashibo, Samuel Wu, Wu Jong-su, Mr. President, the following persons have satisfied the requirements for the Doctor of Philosophy. Daniel Aguilos, Kwang Su Jiang, Robert A. Hand, Un Duk Kim, Sung Hoon Lee. You've done very well, and now you can let loose and congratulate our graduates. These, these graduates have not gotten here by themselves, so there's been a whole network of people who have been used by God to prepare them. So we would like to recognize some of those people now. So if you are a parent, a spouse, a child, or any other family member of one of these graduates, I invite you to stand now. If you have taught or mentored any of these graduates, whether in preschool, seminary, or any time in between, you may stand now, please. If you are a fellow student, or a member of the staff, or the Board of Trustees of Calvin Seminary, you may stand now, please. And if you are a member of a church, if any of these graduates have attended, or a supporter or encourager of the seminary and these graduates, you may stand now. And I think anybody could probably stand for that. <laughs> I invite you to follow along with the words on the screen or in print. 
We praise and thank you, Heavenly Father, for lavishing your glorious riches on Calvin Seminary and on this graduating class. We thank you for years of increase, for decades of development and maturing. We thank you for students who hunger for the knowledge of your will and purposes. For Professor. Por los donantes y electores que han captado la visión de tu glorioso reino y de las tareas que podemos hacer por el rey, por las voces proféticas que nos advierten, disciplinan y corrigen cuando perdemos el rumbo, por los graduados cuyas vidas de alegre servicio y obediencia liberadora atestiguan el reinado de Cristo en tiempos formas y lugares que superan la mejor planificación y las esperanzas más osadas. Te damos gracias, Señor, por tu gran fidelidad. We thank you today for the strength you give us through the Spirit for the gift of Christ dwelling in our hearts and lives and programs, and for the communion of all the saints in whom we catch a glimpse of how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. On this glad day, we praise the name. invite you to stand for a blessing. As you recognize God's call on your life, we also recognize God's love for you, his desire to bless you as we do that again tonight, this evening. So just a few reminders in just a moment, but, but first receive this blessing from God. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you his love, his joy, his peace, his strength through Jesus Christ alone. And all God's people say, amen. Before you turn, at this point, I invite you to turn around. There's to be a photographer at the back, way up there. You can see he's way up there. And he invites you to put your mask down. That's his signal to me. Put your mask down. All right? Mask down, smile, kind of move around. Maybe if he can't see you, that's because you can't see him. So you can move around your aisle a little bit. We're still six feet separate. So we're going to take a really big picture of this moment in time. And um, David, we're counting on you. All right, thank you. All right. Oh, one more, he said. Sorry, I can't hear you, David. He for forgot the lens cap, just kidding. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right. In just a moment, we're going to be singing a closing hymn. You can once again, English or Spanish, Be Thou My Vision. Uh, and then afterwards, it'll be the recessional. The platform party will go as we came in, followed by faculty, and then you students as you once again are let out. There's an opportunity for us to join kind of at the staircase or just outside. We want you to be as safe as possible. Uh, just to note that faculty, is especially, they know of their require, their the request that you have to say, let's, let's hang around together. Some of them will do it here, some of them may do it outside. I will stay here if you're looking for that kind of moment with your diploma, and once again, you have at least the holder with you at this time point, but we just want to celebrate with you. And we told Kelvin University, we can have it till midnight, right? They said, sure. All right, so we're gonna do that. And as we do this, let's remember again, 
our hearts are full, when our hearts are in touch with God's hearts, when our vision is in keeping with his vision. Be thou my vision.